Montessori Musings webinar. We are delighted to see our faithful followers and also uh, newcomers. We thought it would be um, appropriate, having looked at the um, new EYFS last week, to look at the characteristics of effective learning um, because they provide us with a tool to understand the children a little bit better. Tonight we will also share some videos because um, they give us very good examples and clear insights of children demonstrating the enormous capacity for spontaneous learning and pro problem, problem solving and being critical thinkers. And then we will break up into breakout rooms again, and you will have an opportunity to think about what these characteristics mean to you as practitioners uh, in your everyday work with young children. I would also want to urge you to use them as tools for evaluating your observations and considering combining them with learning stories. They give us fantastically rich language to celebrate the children's achievements. Anyway, um, as usual, um, Gwendolyn will make sure that we are well looked after. And um, again, if you wouldn't mind staying muted for the presentation, but um, as there are not huge numbers, perhaps you will, when you join the breakout rooms, you can stay unmuted and really share your ideas um, with everybody. All the presentation that I'm using is based on the materials provided by Verse to Five Matters and have been taken from their website because um, they have remained faithful to the original outline of the characteristics. So for example, they are talking about characteristics of effective learning rather than characteristics of effective teaching and learning, which is the new terminology used in the EYFS. The, I very much like the definition of the characteristics because it recognizes the capacities of young children to be powerful learners. And it um, denotes the importance of the children having what we used to call real experiences, and we now have a term lived experiences, and it focuses on autonomy and also um, growing awareness of the environment and controlling their own processes of thinking and learning. It also uh, focuses on the importance of the children having time to play, having space and freedom to express their own ideas. And all of these really contribute to the development of the curious, creative, resourceful, and resilient learners. And those are the qualities that we want the children to take away with them as they leave us and go into primary school. Now, um, when we think about the characteristics, it's really, really important that we see them in the context of the pillars of Montessori pedagogy, that we see them in context of the dynamic triangle, so that we look at the child, the environment, as well as the adult. And um, I'm sure that for those of you who are familiar with the EYFS, this also resonates with uh, the principles of the EYFS of the unique child, the enabling environments and uh, the respectful adults with whom the children work. Uh, for me, um, the characteristics provide us with a tool to interpret our observations of children or to give us better understanding of what we are seeing. And I think that is really, really important, particularly for the Montessori community, because we often get stuck with using our Montessori jargon, which is not always accessible to parents. And also it is not accessible um, to the wider community. Um, so if 
you know, we need to express the children's learning in if we are, for example, preparing summative assessment for the, to follow the child into primary school, it needs to be expressed in a language that the teachers will understand. And for me, it is also very important that it celebrates the child, that it is a real uh, gift to the child as they leave our setting. Um, in terms of the environments in the um, in the verse to five matters description of um, the characteristics of effective learning. Um, the guidance relates not only to the child and explaining the child's behaviors and skills and capacities to think, but it also gives recommendations of how the environment could provide for the child's learning and it focuses on what the adults could do. I think this is an opportunity for us as Montessorians to explain the environment that we provide in the context of what the children need, what they are interested in, what they are curious about. And it also gives us an opportunity for us to offer the sensitive and nurturing support for the whole child. Um, as I was preparing um, the presentation, I suddenly became very aware of the fact that it doesn't often refer to children's feelings. It very much focuses on the child's capacity to, capacity to think and to learn. And I would, as we come to look at the um, clips of um, the examples of the characteristics, I would like you to think also about well, how does this make the child feel? What is the child feeling as they are learning? Because for me, that um, affective element of the learning process is a very, very important part of the whole child. So um, the characteristics are explained in three groups of features. Um, the first feature is explaining the child's engagement, and it is talking about what the child is doing as the child is being engaged in playing and exploring. So the child is finding out, the child demonstrates curiosity and particular interest. The child also uses their senses and enjoys open-ended activities. And I think for us as Montessorians, we need to really think about what we understand by those open-ended activities and how we enable the children to engage with the prepared environment in an open-ended way. They also um, play with what they know and what children know is often best demonstrated in their role play. They often mirror their personal experiences. And so they are pretending, they are representing, they are role playing and acting out, often relating to the lived experiences that they have had um, and mirroring what they know about their environment. And of course, they need to be able to start some of these activities. They need to be able to really explore the exploration needs to be their own. So they need to use their initiative and they sometimes need to be brave to start an activity or um, even join a group of children in what they are doing. So the engagement is really um, something that we see quite often in Montessori environments. We might not express it in these terms, but it is present in what the children are doing. When we look at um, the second feature described by the characteristics, we are talking about the children's motivations. And so it is not only the engaging, but also staying with the task, um, being concentrating on the activity well enough to be able to really find out and um, stay focused and paying attention to what is happening. They need to continue to persevere. And in order to persevere, the child needs to believe that they are capable. So they, this is the one element of the feeling. The child needs to believe in their own capacity. Now, if you think about the importance of independence and autonomy in the Montessori environment, um, if you think about the skills that the children are learning, 
it is through these activities that the child should believe in what they can do. They should believe in their skills. They should believe in their capacity that they can do something and therefore feed their capacity to um, stay on the task and um, try to complete the task and also demonstrating that they are proud of what they have achieved. And I know that all of you have wonderful examples of the joy of achieving because so many of us always say, oh, did you hear? He said, I can do it by myself. This whole um, world of Montessori is filled with examples of children really delighting in their capacity to do something for themselves. And that feeds their motivation further. It gives them the courage to take risks and try again. When we think about the thinking qualities or thinking feature of the characteristics, um, we begin to think the child's begin to recognize um, the child's capacity to be creative and truly um, try to think about things out of the box. They are thinking about new ideas. They are thinking about new possibilities and um, they also begin to hypothesize. They say, what about if we do it like this? What about if we try it in this way? So they are finding new ways of thinking. It is often that this, we witness this thinking process when children work in collaboration, when there is a conversation, when they share ideas with another or share ideas with an adult. And that sometimes challenges our idea of the children having to do things quietly. I think that for some children doing things quietly suits very much their personality, but there are many um, three and a half, four-year-olds who actually demonstrate their thinking through conversations with other children, with, um, with their peers or conversations with adults. And this is where we come um, to approach some of the principles of the sustained shared thinking and what it really means to the child. And of course, the children are given lots of opportunities to problem solve and problem solving gives them tools for critical thinking. So they begin to plan and they also talk about or check if they are successful or if they need to review things. Um, I don't know how many of you have witnessed opportunities of block play, but for me, it was in the block play area that this whole idea of hypothesizing and trying things and being critical about how things should work are really demonstrated extremely well um, for the children. So, what I would like you to think about is that these features are not linear. The child is not exploring and then, um, or engaging, being motivated and then thinking. It is quite possible to see evidence of quite, quite sophisticated thinking out of the box. Um, but we need to give the children time to play and space to play in order to be able to show those characteristics to us. Um, so we are now ready to share some of the clips which are part of the um, Burst to Five Matters package. Um, they are available on Siren Films and they are free of charge. They're, they are real treasures. There are many wonderful examples. I have just selecting quite a few. And um, in this slide, I have used some comments about um, what I have liked about the slide uh, clips, because when we share um, the video, people will not be able to necessarily see the video. So it required my comment. But anyway, let's go to have a look at having your own ideas, Wendelin, please. To be creative, children use their imaginations. Sometimes it's using imagination to find new ways of doing things or solving a problem. Often the goal can change as the process unfolds. There certainly isn't always an end product. 
but they're learning to use their minds in a way that's original to them and having their own ideas. Even before they can communicate verbally, children use their hands and movements to do their thinking. So, didn't you think that it was wonderful how this little toddler showed us her thinking? She was already linking together ideas of the similar things and grouping them together in quite a sophisticated way without having any language. And I love the acute intelligence that toddlers um, demonstrate in their learning um, as we watch them, if we have the time to watch them and if we have the time to engage with um, their interests in the environment. Um, May we have a look at the second one, please? Love is locked up. He going to find his mummy. He, he need to go in the hole. Big hole. Big. He need a big hole. Being able to voice their thoughts, sometimes to themselves and sometimes to others, gives children the ability to come up with more sophisticated links as they think about the world around them. This leads to children learning to make predictions. They begin to link previous knowledge with new experiences. Hey, she's, she's He's sleeping. No, he's not. A fog of light. No, no, put, don't put it in. Frogs in there. Can frogs eat them? Frogs can eat worms. Who? The birds eat worms? No. The reds. The parrot eat worms, so. Um, Frogs do work too. You can't put it in. Fine. But frogs won't eat them. But mommy can't see he. What is he see? You need to put in the mug and then dig a hole. Then dig a big hole. Take a pic. You can't cut it. You want a spike. Worms can't get in. But the spider can get in. So when just he just that spider's house can go in through that other hole for here. Or the bucket. Uh, bees go in there, so and 
the birds go in there. Again, um, the little boy's empathy for the worm and the need to be with his mum and being in the hole, despite his limitations of expressing his ideas, he's absolutely adamant that the worm needs to be looked after. Um, and that whole idea of um, then sharing who might potentially eat the worm, would it be the birds or would it be frogs, all demonstrate what the children really know and give the teachers real opportunities to build on um, this conversation or introduce new ideas about um, caring for others, caring for the environment. Uh, there's a real opportunity to plant some of the ideas of uh, some of the principles of the sustainable development goals. Um, it gives us opportunities to um, really give the Chinese boy opportunity to express his love for his family, talk about his family and what it really means to him in order to improve his language. So there's a huge richness um, in that little clip. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the next one, please, Wendelin. That one down and put that one under. The creative process is bound up with critical thinking. As children begin to evaluate their actions, ideas, and things they notice to come up with an effective solution. Children who are becoming good at learning learn to think about thinking. They are becoming aware of their own thinking. This is called metacognition and is the key to self-regulated learning. This one's really hard because that's a good. This one's pretty easy because this one. It allows children to become aware of the ways they learn and how they learn best. They can consciously plan how to solve a problem or perform a task. They can check how well things are going and start using different strategies if needed. They can think about how well something worked. This is a really hard one. So you've got to throw, bounce it off here, got to go that one, that one or that one. Talking out loud to yourself is a way of thinking about your thinking. Oh! Too high! Later, this dialogue becomes internalised. Actually, if I move that back and I run further back, it would be better. The neural connections Ooh. in the brain, allowing these things to happen, develop over many years. Oh. It's not about learning facts. It's learning and being aware of how to learn. I'm sure you have all witnessed um, many of those situations where children are trying to learn by trial and error, as we have just seen this, the little boy. And the last one, please, Wendelin. Put this inside the snake. Right. Encourage children to reflect on the task, on what is going well, or what might need improving. And if we think about it, what's going to happen with the, if the nail comes through here, because it's quite thin, what's going to happen to the nail on this side? I don't know. Maybe it won't be easy. Maybe I'll do it differently. I don't know, I'm just worried about the nail sticking out. So I'm just wondering if there's any possibilities. Well, that's impossible, we could put it there. It's because that I'm putting... Why, why do you think it will work there and it wouldn't work there then, Sam? Because it's, it's got the and the lay on underneath no, and not on that. Oh, Absolutely. Have it's thicker, isn't it? Okay. It's still me. 
Whoops. How you doing, more nails? Fantastic. Okay. Mm -mm. Now I've got a different problem. That is a little bit more and none on that side. Hmm. It's got a better I've got a better idea now. Just need to find that one in a little bit more. I'm I'm gonna need to have three things actually, Pete. Yeah. To for this bit to work. Yeah, but there's there's other bits in the box if you do need another bit. I know. Give them feedback. Help them think about what they've done. My God, look at this thing I made now. It's looking really interesting. I love the way you've joined these two bits on here. Yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. It's, you use those long stuff, nails to join them? Stuff. Yeah, it's because they wouldn't fit through two of them. Absolutely. Why. Maybe I need to help with another nail there. I really enjoyed the cooperation between the boy and the man and the sensitivity with which the man helped the boy think about what he was doing in a very gentle um, way, still giving lots of space for the child to think, to come up with his own, his own ideas. I hope that these clips would have opened a uh, Pandora's box for you of delights. I hope you will go to the Siren Films website and you will try to look at some of the films. They are ideal for training and really wonderful demonstration of children's capacities to do things for themselves if they are given sensitive support. Um, I... Um, think that it would be good for us to now look at um, the questions for our breakout sessions. Um, and um, I hope that you have been inspired enough to reflect on what you are doing with, um, with your colleagues, what you are doing with the children in your settings. I would just like to say that I think it's not by mistake that all the examples of this fantastic work with by young children are recorded outside. I think that it is really important to consider the potential of the outside environment, which would really, which really nurtures the children's capacity to learn and have the freedom to be thinking beyond the confines of the classroom beyond the confines of the prepared environment. Um, so here we are, here are our questions for the breakouts. How have you, or how might you use the characteristics of effective learning as a tool to understand and support children's learning? And also how could you use the characteristics to celebrate children's learning in communication with parents? So one of them is, how you could use it to express that learning and how would you like to share it with parents? Gwendolyn, would you like to organize us into our rooms? Thank you very much. Yes.
welcome back from our breakouts. Um, and um, I wondered if um, the facilitators would like to share some of um, the discussions which we have had. Um, huh, now I've forgotten who was working with whom. Um, Michelle, who, who were you working with? So I was with Heidi. Uh, mm. And I've tried to make some notes. I have already apologized to my, all the guys in my room if I don't mention everything, because we had some amazing, really nice, rich uh, discussion with some lovely ideas. But I'll just try and link it through a few through. So we had a bit of a discussion about um, how the different activities and the, diff the different aspects of, of uh, the Montessori activities naturally relate um, to the characteristics effective learning and then we had a discussion about linking that back to the indirect objectives which we don't always recognize the importance of and how those indirect act objectives to our activities are very directly linked to play and exploring active learning and problem solving but because they're not the obvious I have achieved the pink tower but these are the processes I've gone through the processes and those indirect objectives are the characteristics of active learning. So it's about, um, we talked about then re um, looking with staff um, at what their learning reflects on and rethink on their own training and look behind the direct reasons that, that we're carrying those out, which then linked on to the confidence in the staff in revisiting, using the language that they need to support people and parents and children's understanding in, in what they're achieving. Um, Julie brought up a great thing. So Julie's just on her forest school training, Julie Jack, and she's, that really helped her to, to think about how Montessori and forest schooling links really beautifully and really naturally. Um, and we looked at um, the, we, we then went back to the adult role and revisited back on the, the very foundations of the philosophy again, which is this non-interruption and non-interference and how actually re-educating the staff and the importance of stepping back. But then when you do step in, it is with leading questions. It's, you know, with the sustained shared speaking, speaking thinking. And, um, um, and we, um, Heidi took us back to the 1946 lectures where Montessori almost talks about policing the concentration of the child um, and thinking about, you know, why we're not interfering. And then we relied on David and David brought us back to our second question, which at that point we'd all forgotten about, which is about linking with parents. And Lucy came up with a really lovely idea that they're doing in their setting to engage parents in understanding the characteristics of effective learning is using children's storybooks. So linking the books and the, the stories in the books to the characters of effective learning and what the children can gain from the books. And we had quite a discussion about how hard it is at the moment. I mean, it's always been difficult to engage parents, hasn't it? And to get them to understand what we're doing and why we're doing it, but how it's become hard, harder now because of COVID and that that transactional attitude um, is seeping in even more to parents. There we go, sorry. On. Brilliant. Thank you very much. Um, Marion and Suzanne, what would you like to share? Well, I think Suzanne was making lots of notes, so I can't <laughs> rely upon her to speak, but I think we <clears throat> we did, we, we thought that the clips were so lovely because they just remind us of the magical moments and the concentration um, and uh, one of, was it Mary? I, I think it was Mary was talking about um, being with a child this week and um, playing with a whisk. And uh, the child just took the storyline and, and talked about the, um, it, it talked about volcanoes and eruption and it was all from the snowflakes and the, and the whisk and how the learning leads um, the thinking and how the child was so immersed in what he was doing that you, the learning was being almost controlled or, or, or the story was coming just from the child without any real input from the adult just being there to support. Um, we also sort of thought that how 
our observations can inform the parents if we do them in a very um, story-like um, manner and, and sort of telling stories. But Melissa came up with a lovely gem that, um, you know, when the, to engage the parents and to include the parents, you know, often when the children are, are um, collected, the first question the parent will ask is, oh, what have you done today? Or, you know, has he been good or, or whatever? But Melissa said from her experience, one of the most valuable things she did was uh, in those last few minutes when they're getting on their coats and everything, to actually get the children to reflect on what it was that they did today that they really liked doing. So it's really strong in their mind when the parent uh, launches into the question of, oh, what have you done today? Because then they're talking about something that was the favorite for them. So uh, we thought that was a really lovely way to value and celebrate what they're doing during the setting. Susanna. I, uh, Suzanne, sorry. Um, what have you written down because you were writing? <laughs> I think, well, just about what you've said as well. Um, we really touched on creating opportunities for expression for the children. And I think, Marion, one of your gems was seeding the environment with seeds of thought, which I thought was a really nice way to, to put that. And also to develop the adult skill of not jumping in and taking over before the child has finished, because so often we see the child, you know, talking about something or doing something and we feel that impulse to need to share or need to redirect the child to further learning at that moment. So to understand just, you know, when to, when to do that. And the other part also that was felt to be a challenge was you know, the need to keep records and that sometimes you almost need to forget the paperwork and just be in that moment with the child and then take that further later. And obviously the, another challenge would be to get the management on board because the managers of the settings who need to keep those records are not there with the children. So to be able to then take that information through to the managers at a later point um, in a way that can still be record kept is something that needed to be thought of. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. And Wendy and Antonella. Mm. Antonella, do you want to report back? Yes, well, I start uh, and then uh, you come in. Uh, when I this. would say, Antonella, Debbie's put something really nice, which I do mm. think I'd like to just share. It was nice to chat to other practitioners and see that we are all working along similar items, lines, and communicating with parents on how their children yes. are learning. And that really came through, didn't it? Yes, it did. I think it, it did. It, um, come through uh, with all the, the examples. Uh, um, Debbie uh, mentioned uh, how they have worked uh, on St. George's Day and uh, so following the interest uh, of children and seeing how they were engaged, they carry on in developing activities uh, through this. And, uh, um, and so um, offering children the opportunity to use uh, all the material that is uh, available in the favorable environment, uh, um, the red rods, uh, the geometric solids, uh, all sorts of uh, material children, and then they were building castles and they were having ideas of how to create uh, towers. Uh, and then there was the child that they wanted to be a king and they, they, they had a tea party. I don't know how much royal it was at that party, but there were all these ideas. So really pulling together the thinking uh, in, for children creatively and uh, also critically. So all, all of that, and that uh, the fact that uh, these experiences were shared with parents, uh, that uh, um, brought uh, more language, uh, um, you know, describing and explaining what the children have done to parents. Uh, and that uh, brought uh, almost an amplification of uh, the planning because uh, the parents, uh, planned to go and visit castles. So it's really, 
using uh, um, also the language of uh, engagement and curiosity and um, being creative and thinking and new ideas uh, that uh, this uh, collaboration with parents uh, come uh, really to life. And a similar um, thread came from Joe that talked about uh, the narratives uh, that share with parents uh, using the language of the characteristics, um, but also um, from Charlotte uh, that brought the example of a, a child with um, uh, special educational needs and uh, um, teachers together um, thinking about the importance of exploration uh, and also using movement and senses. Uh, um, allowed more time and the freedom to the, to the child to explore lentils. For a longer time, it was a, a quite important experience for this child and uh, um, in a way also for other children. Um, and again, there was the communication of this curiosity and exploration shared with uh, um, the parents. So the the observation, the planning, the use of the environment and the facilitation um, comes all um, together. And using this language is very useful. Wendy? Wendy? I think Antonella's co covered everything. I think the only thing is that all practitioners felt that the parents were now beginning to see their children more in a holistic way rather than oh my child's good at numbers or that sort of thing but looking at the child as a whole and that came through from all all of the practitioners lovely session thank you lovely thank you everybody for your contributions um as always um these feedbacks bring us pearls and very diverse perspectives of um what we are doing and i think that's in a way the breakouts are the most valuable parts of the webinars in our group we um, shared lots of practical ideas that, of things that we have observed that mirrored some of the features of the characteristics. Uh, but there was also interesting um, addition um, um, by Alison, who shares the characteristics as part of induction um, of staff into her setting. And that moves us on to the, um, onto the fact that um, the characteristics can also apply to adults learning, that we also need to have this joy of children's learning and we also need to have um, the capacity to, to have a can-do attitude. Um, to our task in supporting the children. So there's suddenly it's switched from the child onto the adult. And um, that reminds me of um, the need for partnership between the teacher and the children. This is kind of co-learning almost um, as, we, um, um, as we work together with the children. And um, the... Um, Anna Maria shared this important element of the feeling that we get when we watched children linking things together, creating, expressing their joy of learning. And this feeling of real fulfillment that we receive as practitioners. And we mustn't forget that sharing um, our lives with children of this age is very hard work, but it is also incredibly rewarding because we receive this first-hand experience of their capacity to learn about the world in which they live and the communities uh, in which they live. And for that, we should be truly grateful because it is never a dull moment when we are with young children. Um, so I hope that the webinar will give you lots of tools um, for finding new energies in how to express the observations of the children with whom you work. It will 
give you tools to embrace the EYFS with positive attitudes and joy and curiosity about the child and the families from, they, from which um, they come. Uh, next week, we are looking at is a book club. And um, it's usually a smaller group of people getting together. We are embracing Philippa Perry's writing. And if you haven't come across Philippa Perry's book about the things we should know before we become parents, we strongly recommend it, even if you choose not to join us for the book club next week. In two weeks time, we will be presenting Montessori Europe webinar, looking at um, schemas and revisiting Piaget's theory of development. Um, little bit more heavy session, but important in terms of our understanding, for example, children's theory of mind or um, understanding children's development because Piaget's ideas are very much aligned with uh, Montessori's own ideas. So thank you very much again. Um, lots of, I hope there's food for thought and we will see you soon again. Thank you very much. Bye-bye for now.